Yeah man, we're here on another wonderful day to give thanks and right about now if you address certain things, um, actually look at certain things. Uh, the recent presidential debate in the US between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump has been the topic of the town right now and even in Jamaica. Even my mother was like, oh, oh what, what, what? My auntie was like, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> my woman, everybody. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to do a recap. I really, to all the people that didn't watch it and don't know what's going on, you have to look for some of these people. It's very interesting. Actually, it's entertaining to write it. Check it out right now. Recap. No cap. Donald Trump versus Kamala Harris. Debate. She doesn't have a plan. She copied Biden's plan. And it's like four sentences, like run, spot, run. Four sentences that are just, oh, we'll try and lower taxes. She doesn't have a plan. Take a look at her plan. She doesn't have a plan. I believe in the ambition, the aspirations, the dreams of the American people. And that is why I imagine and have actually a plan to build what I call an opportunity economy. Because here's the thing. We know that we have a, a shortage of, of homes and housing. And the cost of housing is too expensive for far too many people. We know that young families need support to raise their children, and I intend on extending a tax cut for those families of $6,000, which is the largest child tax credit that we have given in a long time. My opponent, on the other hand, his plan is to do what he has done before, which is to provide a tax cut for billionaires and big corporations, which will result in $5 trillion to America's deficit. We're doing tariffs on other countries. Other countries are going to finally, after 75 years pay us back for all that we've done for the world. Uh, look, we've had a terrible economy because inflation has, which is really known as a country buster, it breaks up countries. We have inflation like very few people have ever seen before, probably the worst in our nation's history. We were at 21 percent, but that's being generous because many things are 50, 60, 70, and 80 percent higher than they were just a few years ago. They have, and she has, destroyed our country with policy that's insane. Almost policy that you'd say they have to hate our country. First of all, they bought their chips from Taiwan. We hardly make chips anymore because of uh, philosophies like they have and policies like they have. I don't say her because she has no policy. Everything that she believed three years ago and four years ago is out the window. She's going to my philosophy now. In fact, I was going to send her a MAGA hat. She's gone to my philosophy. but. If she ever got elected, she'd change it, and it will be the end of our country. She's a Marxist. Everybody knows she's a Marxist. Her father's a Marxist professor in economics, and he taught her well. But when you look at what she's done to our country, and when you look at these millions and millions of people that are pouring into our country monthly, where it's, I believe, 21 million people, not the 15 that people say, and I think it's a lot higher than the 21, that's bigger than New York State pouring in. And just look at what they're doing to our country. They're criminals. Many of these people coming in are criminals. And that's bad for our economy, too. You know, you mentioned before, we'll talk about immigration later. Well, bad immigration is the worst thing that can happen to our economy. They have, and she has, destroyed our country with policy that's insane. Almost policy that you'd say, they have to hate our country. And Trump. Well, as I said, you're going to hear a bunch of lies, and that's not actually a surprising fact. Let's understand how we got here. Donald Trump hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade. And they did exactly as he intended. And now, in over 20 states, there are Trump abortion bans, which make it criminal for a doctor or nurse to provide health care in one state, it provides prison for life. Trump abortion bans that make no exception even for rape and incest, which understand what that means. A survivor of a crime of violation to their body does not have the right to make a decision about what happens to their body next. That is immoral. And one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree the government and Donald Trump certainly should not be telling a woman what to do with her body. I have talked with women around our country. You want to talk about this is what people wanted? Pregnant women who want to carry a pregnancy to term, suffering from a miscarriage, being denied care in an emergency room because the health care providers are afraid they might go to jail and she's bleeding out in a car in the parking lot? She didn't want that. Her husband didn't want that. 
a 12 or 13 year old survivor of incest, being forced to carry a pregnancy to term? They don't want that. If you want to really know the inside track on who the former president is, if he didn't make it clear already, just ask people who have worked with him. His former chief of staff, a four-star general, has said he has contempt for the Constitution of the United States. His former national security advisor has said he is dangerous and unfit. His former secretary of defense has said the nation, the republic, would never survive another Trump term. See, I'm a different kind of a person. I fired most of those people. Not so graciously. They did bad things or a bad job. I fired them. They never fired one person. They didn't fire anybody having to do with Kim Jong-un. And it is absolutely well known that these dictators and autocrats are rooting for you to be president again because they're so clear. They can manipulate you with flattery and favors. And that is why so many military leaders who you have worked with have told me you are a disgrace. That is why we understand that we have to have a president who is not consistently weak and wrong on Vice national president security, Harris. including the importance of upholding and respecting in highest regard our military. Vice President Harris, thank you. They're the ones, and she's the one that caused it, that's weak on national security by allowing every nation last month for the year, 168 different countries sending people into our country. Their crime weights are way down. Putin endorsed her last week, said, I hope she wins. And I think he meant it, because what he's gotten away with is absolutely incredible. It wouldn't have happened with me. The leaders of other countries think that they're weak and incompetent, and they are. They're grossly incompetent. And I just ask one question. Why does Biden go in and kill the Keystone Pipeline and approve the single biggest deal that Russia's ever made, Nord Stream 2, the biggest pipeline anywhere in the world going to Germany and all over Europe, because they're weak and they're ineffective. Yes, there you go, people. That was the recap of one of the most interesting debate them ever in our history. You know what I mean? I say a black woman versus, you know, a black woman, Kamala Harris versus Donald Trump, a so-called, we don't know what he is exactly, if he's racist or whatever. We don't know yet. I don't know fully, people. I'm just hearing a lot of talk, you know, so I can't be the judge. But all I can say is this was very interesting. To all who full giant, make sure you leave your feedback. Tell me what you think about this. It's crazy. I heard a whole heap of things, but I'm not going to say much, you know, not much more. But however, subscribe, like the video. Please hit the notification bell. Stay tuned for more videos. And you don't know new music on the way. Yeah, man, musician first, right? That's me, G-Terra. No schooling outside. Nice.